Good evening, my fellow light explorers. Today, I'm at Toadstool Hoodoos to shoot the Milky Way. Hey guys, so today I'm at beautiful Toadstool Hoodoos, which uh, lies between Kanab in Utah and Page in Arizona. Uh, Kanab is uh, about 40 miles west of here and uh, this area has some awesome uh, landscape uh, structures. We have hoodoos, we have rocks, we have uh, beautiful uh, sandstone hills and uh, it's great for landscape photography and having a Milky Way in the background makes it even more delicious. So. I'm here to uh, shoot some Milky Way shots and uh, the way I shoot the Milky Way shots are I shoot one composition every night and that's because I don't light paint my foreground. I find a composition and I take the foreground at dusk uh, and then I take the Milky Way when it uh, rises and it's at the angle that suits my composition and then I blend them together uh, in Photoshop or some other software which means that I need to have my tripod in one place for the foreground shot and then I wait until the Milky Way rises to get the second shot because I want them to be synced up completely. Um, but what I plan on doing is that uh, I will show you the three locations that I found uh, while walking around and that I feel might uh, be pretty awesome for a Milky Way photograph and uh, I'll walk you through the process, my thought process, why I chose those locations and what I intend doing uh, uh, when I compose the photograph and how I plan on taking the photograph and what I intend doing uh, to blend them. So let's go to location number one which is that direction and let me show you what I found. So come with me. So, while walking towards location number one, let's talk about uh, technique and uh, how I intend getting these uh, photos. So the way I do my Milky Way shots is I do a dual exposure, one for the foreground at dusk and uh, the other for the Milky Way uh, between like 10 p.m. to anywhere at 3 a.m. You know, depends on the composition, depends on when the Milky Way arises, what the, uh, what angle I want, what elevation I want, etc. It depends on my composition. So, I will shoot the foreground at dusk and I'll make sure that uh, it's slightly underexposed, maybe a stop or two stops, so it's not very bright. And of course, in post, I can always uh, darken it or lighten it further, depending on how I want it to blend with the Milky Way in the background. And then uh, I might focus stack the uh, foreground if it's uh, if I find that the near objects and the far objects all can't be in focus using the hyperfocal distance. I might uh, stack, uh, might focus stack. So at 14 millimeters, I find that maybe two or three images are more than sufficient to focus stack. So I'll use an aperture of say f11, keep the shutter speed and ISO constant, and then first focus on the nearest object uh, in the frame, in the foreground. Uh, take a photograph and then focus somewhere in the middle, take a photo, and then take the last photo with the focus point on the furthest object in the foreground. So, 
then I will get into Photoshop or I will take it into uh, dedicated software like Helicon Focus and uh, do a, a focus stack and then save that as a TIFF file. And then I will process the background, the Milky Way, uh, in say DxO Photo Lab or using Camera Raw. I prefer DxO Photo Lab as my software of choice. And then uh, export the uh, file as a TIFF file and then use that background TIFF file with the foreground that we had uh, initially saved, the focus stacked uh, TIFF file bring them into Photoshop and then uh, blend uh, using color range or uh, using uh, dedicated uh, uh, software for luminosity masks, etc. It depends really how complex the masking has to be. So that's the technique for uh, exposure blending and how I take my Milky Way shots. The foreground normally would be, the exposure would be whatever the uh, uh, it entails. It depends on lighting conditions, etc. So I don't want to uh, give you any sort of, uh, uh, you know, hard details because it depends on lighting conditions. But the Milky Way, I uh, use the 500 rule. So essentially you divide 500 number by the focal length of your lens. And whatever number you get, you basically use that as your maximum shutter speed. So let's say you had a, a focal length of 25. So 500 by 25 is 20 millimeters, sorry, 20 uh, seconds. So you don't go beyond 20 seconds uh, when you set your shutter speed for the Milky Way. And the reason is that if you use a longer shutter speed than that, you will start to get star trails. And you want to have pinpoint sharp stars, right? Now I found that 500 is a pretty large number with these modern sensors and high pixels. So I tend to use 300 as my number. And uh, at 14 millimeters or 16 millimeters, I will normally use a shutter speed of around 15 seconds uh, during dark skies. So typically I will use an ISO of uh, 5,000, 4,000 to 5,000, uh, a shutter speed of around 15 seconds. And uh, I will use uh, an aperture of uh, f2.8 that's on my lens, I have a Nikon 1424. So I open the aperture all the way and uh, take the shot and blend it later on in uh, Photoshop. Now, for uh, taking the exposure, I use a self timer with a five uh, second uh, delay. And uh, that normally is sufficient to, uh, to take the uh, a photo without any camera shake, etc. Now, for the Milky Way, I also use an app called Photo Pills. Uh, if you haven't got any app, then Photo Pills is pretty awesome. I believe it's for both Android and iOS. I could be wrong. I have it for iOS. And uh, it literally shows you where the Milky Way will be at a given time and date. And you can actually get a forecast of where it'll be and what elevation, what angle, etc., by moving the Milky Way uh, or moving to the time of day you want to shoot your photo. So highly, highly recommend photo pills, but you have other apps too that are pretty awesome. So that in a nutshell is the technique I use for shooting the Milky Way. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys do and uh, if you use something else or uh, something uh, different.
All right, guys, so I found location number one. Check this out. This is pretty awesome. This will be the foreground for my first Milky Way shot. And uh, what I intend doing is have this as a foreground and then later on at night around 12.30 or 1 when the Milky Way rises and it's near that peak that you see out there, uh, I intend to take the Milky Way shot. Then bring them into Photoshop, stack them, blend them and uh, that will be my final image which I can't wait to show you guys. So let's talk about composition, what I plan on doing. So let's see. Okay, this looks cool. So I plan to have my 14 millimeter, uh, 1424 lens at 14 millimeters on my camera, Nikon D 850. And I plan on uh, composing so we have like this rock, the nearest point, and that peak as a furthest point. And this landscape in the middle looks pretty amazing. Now, I feel like if I focus on this rock right there, uh, and have an aperture of f16 I should get everything in focus acceptable focus from this rock till that peak but just to be on the safe side I will focus stack maybe four or five images uh, you know first I'll focus stack and focus on uh, this rock right here then maybe that rock there then that little uh, rock in between uh, and then finally the peak and then bring them into uh, Helicon Focus, uh, focus tag them and uh, take the resultant TIFF image and blend that image with the uh, Milky Way uh, shot taken at night. All right, guys, that was location number one. And uh, now let's walk towards locations number two and three, which essentially are gonna be the main hoodoo, but different angles. And uh, I will walk you through how I use photo pills to determine the time of uh, the Milky Way angle being uh, suited for my composition. Okay, so this is the general uh, landscape here and this faces south so the Milky Way will rise somewhere around southeast or so and you know it'll come up this way rise and set in that direction so my first composition is somewhere from this angle uh, I like this rock in the foreground um, and I feel like it gives some kind of a foreground uh, element to my photograph because I use an ultra wide lens I'll be shooting at maybe 14 millimeters or 16 millimeters so I'm gonna have this in the foreground and I think I will compose the photograph with all three of these uh, structures and I also want that little white peak uh, with a red uh, top uh, in the background and uh, so I'll have this little frame here and the Milky Way, I was thinking that maybe I'll want it somewhere between the first and second uh, structure or maybe between second and third structure going up uh, the core somewhere in the middle. So we'll see how that turns out, you know, when uh, eventually when the Milky Way rises, my plan might change. But normally what I'll do in a case like this is I'll take a few shots of the Milky Way, you know, one being between that little crescent one between structures one and two and then two and three maybe the core being on top of number two and number three and then later on i will see what suits me uh suits the composition the most now let's see so we have this as a foreground interest and that going to be our uh, the uh, uh 
furthest point of the foreground. And normally at f16 or so, I think if I focus on the hyperfocal distance, I should be having acceptable sharpness uh, from front to back. But uh, just in case, I plan on even focus stacking. So I'll start focus stacking maybe three or four stacks at f f11. So I might start with uh, initially having the same exposure, same shutter speed, same uh, aperture, and same ISO. But I'll first focus on this point. Then I'll take a second shot focusing maybe on that rock right there. A third shot maybe focusing on the middle uh, structure. And the last shot maybe focusing on the last structure. And then I'll take these uh, four images into a software like either Photoshop or Helicon Focus and I will focus tag them so I have front to back sharpness. Although I will say I think I should be getting uh, acceptable sharpness from front to back if I use an f16 ap aperture, but that's in diffraction territory uh, for my Nikon D850. And so I will focus tag two just in case. So that's location number one. Location number, sorry, location number two. You've seen location number one already. And now let's go to location number three, which I think, let's see what composition might work. You know, something along these lines here could be cool. Um, I don't know. I feel like having this rock here in the foreground would be cool, but that's east and the glow from page uh, would light up the night sky and it would come in the picture and sort of ruin the picture on the left of the frame. So I don't want to point my camera or have a, a picture towards the east. So let's move around a little and try and find a position with darker skies. Um, you know, actually, I think if I go somewhere here a little closer and maybe have this rock in the foreground uh, but then the third structure is hidden so no this won't work uh, let's see let's go to All right, let's see if I can go behind this one rock right here and see what I get. Okay, so what about if I keep my camera somewhere here? Oh, that's cool. Okay, so maybe this could be a composition where I have uh, this as my foreground uh, interest and uh, I get all three structures. And then I'll see if I want the Milky Way to be between rock numbers one and two or two and three. We'll decide later. But this is a potential number three composition. But uh, we shall see. Okay, so I think I found my composition number three. Scratch that last one. Uh, I want to go a little lower and uh, have these hoodoos sort of towering above and the Milky Way between these hoodoos. So I'm thinking something like this over here. And uh, so I have the rock here. I have these rocks as foreground. And then I have the hoodoos uh, rising. Maybe I'll move to the right slightly so we have a separation between number two and number three. And I still get the rocks. Yeah, that looks good. And then 
This will be my foreground uh, shot and then I'm going to have the Milky Way either going up between number one and two or between number two and three. I don't think I want the Milky Way to be coming out from or be behind number two or number three because the core gets hidden. The elevation is quite low per photo pills and so I don't want to hide the core. I want to show it. So maybe between one and two is what I'm leaning towards. Okay, so we have our locations. We are ready to shoot the photos. I do want to show you how Photo Pills works and how I use it. So let me show you one example of how I'm going to use Photo Pills to determine the angle of the uh, Milky Way and uh, also the time of uh, optimal uh, composition. So let's go and let me show you how this uh, app works. Like I said, it's an amazing app and uh, until a few weeks ago, I really had no idea of the value of this app. So let me show you how PhotoPills works. Okay guys, let me show you how PhotoPills works. So once you open the app and uh, I go to Planner and then click on night AR now here it's showing me the Milky Way superimposed against the landscape that I've chosen or I'm pointing at I click on now to get the time currently and that's the Milky Way and what I'll do is I'll move the app move the screen sorry until the Milky Way is where I want it to be so let's say I want the Milky Way to be between one and two so that's the core right there of the milky way and here it says that tonight at 12 14 at night the milky way will be between number one and number two at that angle let's say i want the milky way to be between two and three so i'll simply move the screen to the right position the milky way where i want it to be and here it says at 2 o'clock in the morning, the Milky Way will be between 2 and 3. So as you can see, it's a very useful app. It shows you approximately where the Milky Way will be and what time you can expect the Milky Way to be at the angle and uh, location where you want it to be. Well, that's it for me guys thanks for watching and uh, this is my first video I got a lot of uh, requests for uh, details on how I shoot my landscapes and so I thought I start a YouTube channel my websites at uh, lightexplorer.com or the lightexplorer.com and uh, so is the Instagram handle the light explorer and uh, if you like the video like share subscribe if you don't like it no worries leave a comment as to what i could do better in the future and uh, what parts uh, you did not like this vlogging is hard man and i have a newfound respect for vloggers because uh, it takes a lot to have a polished uh, video 
and uh, I'm also here for shooting the photographs so it's a little hard to be distracted and go between vlogging and uh, uh, focusing on my uh, on my photos so thanks again for watching I really appreciate it and uh, this is a light explorer out from Toadstool Hoodoos in beautiful Utah Thank you.